We are playing a survival world with the most incredible equestrian mod, so if you think I spawned in with anything else on my mind, you'd be incorrect. I fear that I will not make any progression until I actually get a horse. Not that one. We're gonna get a... A better one. I have one goal and one goal only. Horse. I've saved you, the whole punch tree, get food and sleep sequence of events. The nearby villages helped guide a painless start and I've scraped together everything I need to stay alive. But if I want to be able to obtain and properly care for my future best friend, there is a couple things we need to accomplish first. I also found a pink sheet. I'm looking forward to getting settled and getting everything underway because right now it feels like everything is a little bit out of my control. <laughs> Uh, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm floundering. So we're gonna take it one step at a time. First of all, starworm horses don't spawn in the wild. We'll need to brew a special type of potion to convert a vanilla horse into a starworm horse. Normally, this would mean progressing to diamond, daring a trip to the nether, and fighting the blazes to power a brewing stand, but the mod comes with an easier to obtain blaze rod crafting recipe using ender pearls and redstone. We'll complete the potion with a piece of cantazare ore that we should find during a mining trip as it isn't incredibly rare. We're going mining. We are, we are going mining. Mining trip. We're going to need a good food source, and the only thing that I have right now is bread. Pretty much just bread. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna... We'll go with bread. We'll need a sustainable food source to keep a horse well fed. Alfalfa, timothy grass, and oats are all easy to come by. You can find them by breaking grass and grow them just like vanilla crops. Third on the list is to build up a suitable shelter or stable to keep a horse safe from any of the mobs wandering about. We are playing on hard mode after all. In order for us to accomplish this with some efficiency, I need at least some iron tools to make gathering materials easier on the joints. I see carpal tunnel in my future. I do want a substantial amount of iron, but I don't know if I'm gonna get it all in one go. Or if I'll just pop down, grab a bit, and come back. Food, torches, tools, crafting table furnace. That looks good to me. So first we're gonna scope out the caves that are beneath our base. Gonna see if they actually go anywhere, because they might not. Look at that! Beautiful cave. Wonderful. Oh, we've got some star room cobble. Always good to have, always good to have. I was really hoping... I'd have a bucket, and I did see a cave across the river just now, but we're gonna grab this coal. Oh, look at that! Okay, we do have a creeper down there. I don't have a shield either. <laughs> oh, this is gonna go badly. Okay. Oh, two. Good. Lots of iron, lots of coal. We're off to a great start. Could try digging in a different direction to see if we can find any cave openings. This doesn't really seem to go anywhere either. This is a little bit disappointing. <laughs> right as I say that, we reach bedrock. I need redstone anyway, so it's fine. Here we are. And this is diamond level then, right here. Okay, I just want to make sure that there's nothing in this cave, especially around this corner. It's always weird seeing this grass in the caves like this. I was hoping for something at least a little bit exciting. I would like to show off one of the, one of the swim oars. No Cantazerate, no Amethyst. Speak of the devil, there we go, Cantazerate! Is this orange stuff under here? Oh, my inventory's full. Uh, what do I not need? I don't need that or that. Perfect. That was my second pick already? Can I mine this with stone? Yes, I can. There we go! 23 from just that, my goodness. It's quite a generous ore, isn't it? Whoop. We'll grab this iron, grab that cantazerite. Check the other side of the hallway, which could very well be another dead end. I'm praying that it is, so that I can head back up. Just taking a peek, just a peek. Did it? Yes! We're able to clear out this whole cave. That is very satisfying to me. Unless me digging through these ores is going to bust open another entrance. Consider this cave cleared. Oh, <laughs> I knew it. I knew I'd break through. Might as well grab it while we're here. I didn't even see this up here. Yeah, we have a stack like that. I'm, I might just leave it there. It's a, uh, it's quite common. Tantas, right? So I'm not too worried. It's possible that we're just a little bit lost. Just like a little bit. Okay, it's not, it's not 
up here because I was like, I'll explore that bit later. I really thought that it was somewhere around here. There we go. Just had to go backwards. Whew. Is it daytime? It is. I'd say we should head home then. I have no attachment to this crafting table. Hi. <laughs> well, that was mighty productive. Now that we have enough iron to fund a full tool set, I can start focusing on what is quite possibly our most important horse-related task. We need some terraforming. Yes, we need terraforming. This will actually make our horse happier to poke their head out from over their pasture and go, wow, that is such a lovely hill. I wish, oh, I wish I could just run all over that hill. It's so hilly. Yes, this is for the good of the horse and not because I got completely and utterly distracted by the shape of the terrain. Some of the features just fit together so well. I saw a thousand opportunities to carve them out and I did this for hours completely lost track of everything I came to do and just terraformed I gave into every what if I did this thought that I had and had a ton of fun in the process it helps when you're terraforming to think of the terrain like it's soft or malleable. You can stretch and pull it out wherever you'd like, letting the vanilla features poke through here and there. That puddle beneath the stream is naturally generated, and the divot in the land happened because there was a very shallow cave right above the riverbed for me to dig into. I could have stopped there, and I should have stopped there, but I couldn't help but think to myself that my future horse would also appreciate a cliff face shadowing the river, and who am I to deny that that was a great idea? It would fit into the terrain I've already built perfectly. Our horse will love this terrain. You know what else our horse would love? A diagonal bridge. In fact, I can't think of anything more important in our quest for a horse, so of course, I got straight to work building the best diagonal bridge I could put together. It was the worst experience of my life. Trying to design a curved diagonal bridge, two geometric facets that are not only difficult to accomplish on their own, but to my genuine surprise, also very difficult to complete in tandem. But with horse as my motivation, as the force that drives me, I achieved greatness and diagonal bridge mastery. In that, I've mastered it by deploying a brilliant distraction tactic to draw focus away from the bridge by hanging up lights, ribbons, and tassels right next to it. With that completed, I take on a mission that is this time genuinely for the horse, I promise. The plan is to dig out a diagonally shaped yard for our stable with a raised track surrounding its perimeter. I need enough space on the inside to fit a one-stall horse barn, a round pen, and I'm also entertaining the possibility of a small arena. The first step is to level out the terrain. This was the worst experience of my life. Would anyone like to take a guess at how long it took me to dig out this shape with unenchanted iron tools? I'm actually embarrassed to say, it's not even that big! Never again. I will never, ever work with terrain without at least efficiency for diamond tools. I think I broke a hundred iron shovels. I had to stop at least five times to go and scrape up more iron from the surrounding cave openings because at this point I was committed. I was stubborn, but it was for horse and that means everything is worth it. Now that I have a landscape to work with, it's time to start building up the structures. We're using mainly oak wood because it's cheap and I'm poor. The raised track surrounding the perimeter requires I design a basic wall edge. This design is subject to change in the future, but I need a good placeholder for the time being. And who knows, maybe having a plain design will be good if I add some more intricate details around the property itself. It might help in providing some negative space, but we'll have to leave that up to my judgment because this area will definitely see strong changes in the future. For now though, it's a really good base to build off of. I've marked out where I want the entrance, round pen, and stable to be, and I've laid out some grass paths around them. I love these red pasture gates I have on the pen, they make for a really good pop of color, and I want to keep going with this red-blue color scheme I have going on. On the interior, I'm using some warm, dark tones to make it feel cozy. The vivid red sandstone from the Star Room Decor mod complements the greens I'm using in the floor. This deco mod is very friendly to a player who enjoys vanilla for what it is. You won't find me using texture packs or many other mods at all. Occasionally, I'll pop on the shaders, but it's not common that I'll play with them. And mods. Other mods, I'm genuinely very picky when it comes to what mods I add to my game. When I play solo, I choose to experience the game through building. So I tend to feel weighed down in larger mod packs. Uh, so we're just playing with Star Room Equestrian, Star Room Decor, and a few client-side mods like just enough items in Xeros's mini-map. 
In terms of the design for the stable itself, I wanted something that looked almost poorly constructed. Okay, not poorly constructed, that's a terrible way of putting this. I wanted it to look like it was just thrown together, or like it was a temporary structure, as if aspects of it could later be taken down and moved, or that it would be cheap enough to abandon altogether once its creator had moved on, or the building had served its purpose. Because I do plan on moving on. In the far future of this series, I'm chasing my dream style of architecture built in my favorite biome, but I'll only move on from this starter base in the plains once I feel that the space is truly lived in. I have many plans on how to develop this land and this style of architecture. I want it to be colorful and fun, detailed with outside of the box thinking, crazy shapes, textiles, tapestries, and canvases in every corner. Everything I make, I want it to be in some way something that either hasn't been done before or something that you wouldn't normally do. I believe that to be the best way to hone my current skills and improve for future. I'm excited to see my progression throughout the duration of this world. It'll be a brilliant way of documenting how my building skills grow and evolve over time. The star of the stable here is this concept that I had for its roof. Instead of a formal roof, we have huge sheets of colorful canvas stretched over the building and tied down to posts. I discovered a beautiful blue-red gradient using mostly vanilla colors. There were two more light blue blocks from the Star Room decor mod that I wanted to use in the build, but it seems they don't have a survival crafting recipe just yet. This just means that I come back to this in the future to change out a couple blocks. But even what I can accomplish now still creates an amazing color harmony. At this point, I'm on the brink of starvation and I still don't have the food I need to feed a horse. I thought I had enough village bread to sustain me through the course of the stable build, but it took me way more time than I had anticipated to get everything done. But I just can't bring myself to build a simple plot of farmland in the ground now, can I? Fortunately, what I have in mind is the most simple build I've done so far. I had most of the materials already in the leftovers from the stables, so it didn't take me long at all to piece everything together in this little farm tent. The red stained glass is meant to emulate a translucent fabric and the wool that borders it helps to give the glass some bone structure. My favorite part about this build in particular is the little flag design that I came up with using an acacia fence gate and a coated chain. I thank the wandering trader that came by earlier to supply me with not only an acacia sapling, but also a jungle sapling. And I will absolutely be using them in my builds as there's no one here to stop me. It is finally time. I have been working so hard and I am very, very excited to actually get started. Well, as you can see, I'm long past uh, getting started. We have some very exciting builds going on. This track that I've built around here is very much just a base. We're going to come back and decorate it a whole lot more, but I just wanted to get this shape in so that we could have an enclosed area for all of our horsey needs. I'm thinking that we're probably gonna have an arena in this corner over here, just a, a small arena. We're gonna definitely bring up the landscape a little bit more, make it a little bit less flat, add some trees, add some bush, uh, maybe trees. Definitely some decorations. I built it in this diagonal shape just to kind of add some interest so that it wasn't all flat. And I think it paid off. I think it looks really nice. There are a couple things that we have to do before we can actually get a horse, uh, but they're gonna be fast. So what is first on the agenda? We need to get some food started. Now it's growing in the farm here, so we just have to craft it. The type of food that we're gonna feed our horse is going to be made of the Timothy grass and the alfalfa seeds or alfalfa bundles, which is this minty pink plant over here. Just need alfalfa and Timothy grass just in a corner like that. I got some quality bales from a swim structure and it has a couple quality bales in it. I did raid one earlier when I started out so I do have a couple on hand. They're probably tucked away in these chests up here. I really need to get my- there we go. Chest situation under control. Uh, also we can grab that brewing stand because we are going to need that as well. Let's see if there's anything else in here that we might need. Uh, leather. Definitely leather. How do we make a hose? We have JEI installed so that I can get the recipes. Okay, wool and iron, it's easy. 
I have my eye on a horse already. One of the vanilla horses that has been roaming around. Swem doesn't have wild horses yet spawning like in bunches. So we're going to have to convert a vanilla horse into one of the Swem horses. So we got a hose and now we need a pitchfork. So we need an iron hoe and two iron ingots. I have an iron hoe already. I wonder if it'll let me use my broken one. Iron and then two pieces of iron around that. Perfect, so we have a hose, a pitchfork, this chest situation is a nightmare. <laughs> but this always happens with my, um, oh, there we go. I got some sticks in there. Oop, don't need that just yet. I did find one though. I had to take a couple mining trips while I was building the stables and the farm and everything else in order to get enough iron for the projects. Need a lot of tools, need a lot of lanterns and chains and stuff like that. What am I doing? I can't reach. <laughs> the trees are so tall. Perfect. 64. Nice. I got one extra. I don't want that clogging up my inventory. I'm just gonna jump in here. I did not think I would make that. Oh, and I'm not wearing my armor right now. Uh, just because I want to show off my skin. I do know what I'm doing. I think. So we're just gonna use wood planks for now. How do you do? This is my little area in here that I have for doing the shavings. And it's actually... A little bit cool how I've designed it. Put these leaves in both of these. These are gonna smelt in the furnaces and once they do uh, they're going to move into the hoppers down here. Perfect! So we have a couple coming through here already and I'll show you why in a second. Because once we come in here I've done a little bit of redstone to be able to grab them easily. Probably only gonna do one layer for now. But yeah, I can grab them right from that room. Should be good. Perfect. Now we do have a couple leftovers. So we can just open that. Pop them right in. And we're good to go. We don't have any leftovers stuck in our inventory. Uh, which is really nice. I want my pitchfork and my hose kept somewhere convenient. Probably... Well, we can probably pop them in here. Like right here. Pitchfork. Uh, feeder. We need a feeder. And then we need to build a tack set. And there's our slow feeder. Where do I put this? It has to be, I think it has to be at ground level. We have a lot of space in here. I hope that the horse's AI is gonna be able to find it here. Fill it up, perfect. And we're gonna put our leftover quality bales. We're gonna start storing them up here. And we'll start down here and store them out in the open like that. Just cause it, it'll be kind of fun. What's next? Tack. Crafting any of the tack sets takes quite a few materials and a little bit of time. We only need four pieces. We need a saddle, bridle, girth strap, and blanket. Everything on top of that is just bells and whistles. So we're gonna go with the adventure tack set. So to get refined leather, you need to get some water, some dried kelp, a water bucket, and the kelp. There we go. Do a couple like that. We can make our saddle here. First piece, adventure saddle. It's just like this. Let's see, what did I need? I needed the bridle. This formation, like that. Adventure bridle. And we can slot them in just like that. Perfect, there's our tack set. We have a saddle, girth strap, bridle, and blanket. The last thing we need is a cantazerate potion. So we smelt a piece of cantazerite in order to turn it into the cantazerite dye. That's one, two, three. We don't need three, we just need one. Because in this series, I only plan on having one horse for the entire time. And we're gonna keep them alive and they're gonna be our best friend forever. And I'm nervous because if I do, if it happens that I do eventually lose that horse, I'm gonna be very attached to it at that point. I'm gonna pop that water bottle in there and then make the Cantazerite potion. Here we go. This is what's gonna turn our horse into a swim horse. We're gonna go find him. I do believe that it is this one over here. Has been hanging around my workstation a lot. And then we just kind of hang out here and sometimes come up to the furnaces and whatnot. So I've seen it wandering around a lot in this area because I think that that's the one that we're gonna grab. I think this is gonna be our swim horse, guys. Just come on over here. We got the achievements for it. I am so excited for this. Okay, here we are. This is what all of this work has been leading up to. 
I'm like nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous. Kintazerate potion. Here we go. Welcome to your new home! Many, many adventures to come, my friends. Many adventures to come. If you have a unique idea for a horse name, anything that you might feel fits the style, absolutely leave a comment and I'll see if anything, if anything jumps out, if anything sticks. And I think we're just gonna call him friend for now. Oh, this is amazing! So yeah, these buckets aren't even making a dent. Almost there. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. And cover that up, put those away. Perfect. We need to bind the tack box. Okay, so I am gonna have to break it, but we'll put it back in that spot where I had it with those signs around it. I think all you have to do is right click. Perfect, okay, it did something. Yeah, swim horse's tack box. <laughs> okay, I've never actually used the tack box before. It's a good way to kind of keep them organized. I like that. I like that a lot. Might have gone overkill with the lockers, because I'm seeing here now, both of these doors are able to be opened. So we have a whole storage room in here. <laughs> I have been building, I have been preparing for this moment for the past, I think, two weeks? long time. Uh, a lot of work and a lot of effort have gone into getting a really good start, really strong start on this series. We'll be working more in this area, texturing the walls, and taking our new friend out for some exploration prospects. There's a couple things that we need from the great beyond that we don't have yet. Some big plans for what is going to actually be our starter base. Because right now, we have a stable, we have a farm. I do have a sheep farm in the makings as well, but I don't actually have a house. But we're not building just any house. You'll you'll have to see. You'll have to see what I have planned for you. It's going to be very, very exciting. There's still a lot of work left to do, but I am excited. Build crazy, insane things that nobody would think of. I really want to push myself to think outside the box and use new shapes and colors and really be excited about this process of creation that we have going on and me and this horse we're gonna do it together we're gonna go through this entire world just me and him and nobody else and an entire world i am so very excited to take you guys on this journey with me so leave those name suggestions in the comments for me i will go looking through them really want to find a good name for this fellow over here i'm gonna say this is the end of this first episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. I hope that you're as excited as I am. She continued to ramble on for another 15 minutes after that. So, have a good day. <laughs>